Just before noon today, a missile siren sounded in the Israeli Golan Heights amid fighting just across the border in Syria. Israel has been weighing how to deal with a potential influx of refugees, while an alliance of Syrian rebels is said to be preparing an offensive to retake Kenetra next door. Shabanari brings us this report from the Syrian-Israel border. A vantage point on a disaster. The Syrian civil war is clearly visible and audible from the Israeli side of the Golan Heights. On Tuesday night, this hill overlooking the Syrian village of Khadr was captured by rebel forces who have had the upper hand recently in this region. Many of the rebels engaged in fighting near the Israeli border belong to Islamist militant groups such as the Nusra Front, the Syrian wing of Al-Qaeda. The Syrian Druze residents of Khadr, many of them still loyal to the Assad regime, now fear what may come if the rebels seize the village itself. The Islamists see the Druze as heretics. While most Druze have managed to keep themselves out of the war so far, it seems the violence has now reached their doorstep. Throughout the day, we've been hearing artillery and mortar fire coming from the Syrian territory behind me here. For the Druze living on the Israeli side of the border, who are unable to help their Syrian brethren, this situation is an anguishing one. All the residents of the Golan are affected, whether it is psychologically or nationalistically. We can see it and feel it every day. There's nothing we can do. We stand here and watch what's going on and pray. Every few minutes, smoke can be seen billowing from where yet another mortar shell or rocket has landed. Some of them land close enough to the border to set off sirens in Israeli territory, as was the case Wednesday. In the past, mortars have leaked across the border. In recent days, many Israeli Jews have been making their way to observation points like this one to see up close for themselves. This man, like many of the Druze living on the Golan, remains a supporter of the Assad regime. The four Druze villages in the Golan are all originally Syrian. We all have family members across the border in Syria. Certainly the situation in Syria affects us as we are unable to help our families, but we are certain they are fighting alongside and in support of the regime. Some young Israeli Jews have even called on authorities to allow them to cross the border and join in the defense of the Jews' villages. Look, there are some youngsters who are eager to go and help our families, but this is a unique situation. We have an impassable border here. Yes, there are those who would like to go out, but that just won't happen, and it wouldn't help anyways. So far, the regime supporters among the Druze have been able to stand their ground. Entering Syria from here is easier said than done. Besides praying and sending humanitarian help, it is difficult to help them. As is the case elsewhere, for now, onlookers here have no choice but to watch and wait. Watch and wait. With me right now is military correspondent Shai Ben-Ari. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. Good evening. Lisa. It was a long day for you. It was. So we will, <laughs> we will do it quick. Uh, I w you know, for weeks we've been sitting here hearing from the Golan Heights some testimonies that Israel basically is using the help of Jabhat al-Nusra to maybe uh, prevent uh, Hezbollah from getting into the border. And now we're seeing the situation is getting more complicated and Israel is being put in the middle and the Druze community is being put in the middle. So what did you see there? Exactly. First of all, some very serious accusations. When you talk to many of the members of the Druze community on the Golan Heights, people are absolutely convinced that uh, Israel is uh, basically aiding or, let's say, treating uh, injured rebel fighters, many of them belonging to the Nusra Front, the, the fighting going on, uh, on uh, in the border region, on the Golan Heights in the Syrian territory, uh, that this is a region where the Nusra Front is currently very dominant when you talk about the rebel forces, and in general, when you talk about the Syrian civil war, Islamist forces have now become the dominant element and the moderates have been marginalized. But, uh, of course, Israeli authorities do deny this. Uh, we're talking about basically uh, the Syrian wing of al-Qaeda. So uh, on paper, there is, of course, no room for any sort of collaboration between Israel and the Nusra Fund. There, is, there are certain channels of communication uh, between both sides of the border, let's call them uh, indirect, through which the transfer of injured uh, personnel amongst the rebel fighters is arranged. Uh, Israel says this only happens with the moderate fighters, but like, again, those have been very marginalized. So we're not talking about an altogether unrealistic scenario when you can imagine a situation where a certain fighter is injured and perhaps things are rushed to get him across the border. But certainly the official version is a, an official denial from these Because if side. we want to think about the current situation, what we're seeing right now in the Golan Heights and what we're seeing right now in the northern border is that basically the northern border is relatively quiet. Uh, we expected a few months ago that something will flare up there, but it didn't. It seems that um, 
I don't know, Israel's reaching some kind of an understanding, mm -hmm. got some help, it's Al-Qaeda Al -Qaeda affiliated um, uh, group, so I, I, I'm trying to not be suspicious, but I am. It is interesting to note that uh, the Israeli side of the border has been very quiet, and that hasn't been the case in the past. If you imagine, uh, or just go back to uh, about a year ago, there were plenty of cases where a, a fire did leak across the border. There was an alarm today in the Golan Heights that, uh, and it ended up that there were, that nothing actually landed on the Israeli side. It was a false alarm, but things do very, get very close. But certainly, the Israeli side is very quiet, and it is a certain scenario where Israel is now uh, uh, basically enjoying some stability on its side, with a lot of chaos in the region uh, throughout. Yeah, Israel also denied that it has some kind of an indirect talks with Hamas, right? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> Shabbat thank you very much for this. No problem.